Hey guys, Vincent here, and in this video, we are going to be calculating the relative gain array for higher order systems in which we have perhaps three inputs and three outputs, or four inputs and four outputs, and so on. And these types of examples are a lot more complicated than the two by two example we had previously because there's a lot more linear algebra involved, and this will take a lot more time if you're doing this by hand. Um, if you're doing this in practice, I would strongly recommend using MATLAB or Excel in order to have computers calculate this for you, just so that um, it's much less likely that you'll make any catastrophic mistakes. Um, and so in order to dig into this uh, theory behind what we're going to be doing here, as well as work through an example problem later on, which uh, will have a relative gain array with real values to play with, um, what we have is essentially... Uh, at the high level to calculate the relative gain of your steady state transfer matrix G. And this is G evaluated at S equals zero. So we've let time go to infinity so that we know the steady state gains of our system. This is equivalent to G. And then this little weird symbol here in X with a circle around it is element by element multiplication of G inverse transpose. So we're gonna be taking the inverse of these n by n arrays and taking the inverse of matrices when they increase in size becomes exponentially more involved, uh, especially when you're doing this by hand. Um, so we're going to be calculating the biggest hurdle in our work here today is going to be calculating the inverse of whatever our steady state transfer function matrix is. Uh, and so this is, involves a lot of linear algebra. And this is generally why teachers won't really ask you these types of questions on exams. Um, because it, you'll spend most of your time doing linear algebra and not necessarily proving uh, any theory. But um, for the sake of this example and for having a complete thing to go on, what we're going to be doing in this video is working through this full problem in which I have this steady state gain array. I'm going to be abbreviating my notation. I'm substituting A, B, C, and so on for my steady state gain values. Uh, or steady state gain. So A is really equivalent to K11, B is equivalent to K12, uh, and so forth. And then just to reiterate, the goal in this, because it is very involved, will be to determine which input to pair with which output in order to ensure the best performance of our system. And uh, perhaps an example would be like, we really want to pair output one with input two uh, in order to have a very effective uh, PID controller in our process. And so with this out of the way, the first thing that we're gonna be doing is uh, calculating this nasty term to the right here. And the first thing to do in calculating the inverse of a matrix is gonna be first determining the determinant of G. And so step one here is to calculate the determinant of G and because this is a three by three array, uh, this will be equivalent to A times EI minus FH minus uh, B times DI minus FG, and then plus, and then C times uh, DH minus eg and so the thing that i want you guys to make a note of here is that uh, this is a scalar quantity and so we'll just make a quick note here that this has dimensions of a scalar so it's literally just a, a simple number and so once we've calculated the determinant of uh, our steady state transfer function matrix g the next step here is going to be getting the cofactors. And this is where uh, things can get very uh, involved with handwriting. But what I'm going to do here in order to determine the cofactors is to define a matrix I will call A. A is very large. Um, A will be equivalent to the cofactors of our matrix G. And the way this works is we start out by building or essentially calculating uh, an array that is the same dimensions. But in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to cover row one and column one. 
and to take the determinant of everything outside of that in our first box here. Um, so this would be the determinant of the matrix E, F, H, I, and then covering row one now, uh, column two, determinant of D, F, G, I, and then um, covering row one and column three, taking the determinant of D, E, G, H. Um, if you have a hard time following what I'm doing, Patrick JMT has an excellent video discussing how to calculate the determinants of, or the inverse of matrices. Um, the next line that we're gonna have here, we're gonna cover row two and column one. So I'm gonna have the determinant of B, C, H, I, uh, covering row two and uh, column two, I'll have A, C, G, I. And then covering row two, column three, I will have A, B, G, H. And then finally, uh, covering row three, column one, I'll have B, C, E, F. Covering row three, column two, I will have A, C, D, F. I'm trying to write clearly. Uh, covering row three, column three, I'll have A, B, D, E. And I know this is a lot to write down, I'm sorry, but this is how we calculate the inverse of the matrix of G. Um, and then the next thing we're gonna do here is we're going to do plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus. And what you're gonna make a note of here if I scroll down a little bit, is that determinants are scalar quantities, as we noted previously. So A is really just determinant, which I'll denote D11, D12, D13, uh, D21, D22, D23, D31, D32, D33. And to elaborate, uh, we have D11, which is equal to plus, and then quantity EI minus FH. Uh, D12 would be equivalent to minus quantity DI minus FG, and so on. And so now that we have calculated uh, what our matrix, our three by three matrix A is equivalent to, uh, we're going to turn to what the definition of our um, inverse of a 3x3 three three matrix is, or any matrix for that matter. And what we're going to make a note of is that G inverse is equivalent to 1 over the determinant of G. And this is just linear algebra, a definition. And then times A transposed. So we're going to take our matrix A, we're going to transpose it, which means switching the rows with the columns. And one way that people kind of describe this is you basically keep your diagonal the same and then you flip uh, these quantities over in place. So like D13 becomes, is switched with the place where D31 is um, and so on. So you just make all these substitutions in order to calculate what A transpose is. But um, the transpose of the transpose is the normal matrix before you took any transposes. Uh, and so something I would like to reiterate here is that turning to our definition of the relative gain of G, which was equivalent to G element by element multiplication of G inverse transposed, and uh, this was equivalent to G element by element multiplication of one over determinant of G and then times A transposed and then transposed. This is really just equal to A, so I'm not even gonna bother with doing the transposes. Um, so once you've got it this far, um, what you're going to make a note of is we now will have calculated what our relative gain array of G is. 
and I'm sorry that this was a lot of math, but um, you know this gets significantly easier when you can just punch this into Excel or MATLAB and calculate all these values. I just walked through how to calculate this by hand. And to provide some actual numbers here, um, we're gonna go through an example and then hit home the main goal of this lesson, which is to determine how to pair inputs and outputs in these MIMO square systems. And so uh, as an example problem, we're going to say that we have G evaluated S equals zero uh, is equivalent to 16.8 minus 16.7. These are uh, example values from a problem set. Um, we have 30.5, 31, 54.1, 4.3 minus 1.4 and 5.4 okay and so if you would like to pause the video and perform the hand multiplication of what we just described here uh, you'll be able to verify these results um, and so what you're going to find is that the relative gain of g in this example is equivalent to the following. We'll have 1.5 minus 0.41 and minus 0.08. We'll have 0 0.99, 0 0.97, and minus 0 0.95, minus 1.48, 0 0.45, and 2.03. And so uh, if you arrived at this relative gain array, good job. Uh, the final thing that we're going to be doing here is now determining which outputs to pair with which inputs. And the way we interpret our results uh, is as follows. Sorry. Um, so just trying to write clearly. Um, the way we look at this, if we're to draw lines through it, is that each row corresponds to your output. So row one corresponds to output one, row two corresponds to output two, and row three corresponds to output three. And each column corresponds to each input. So uh, column one is input one, column two is input two, and column three is input three. And so the way we do this is that we want our relative gain, our lambda sub ij, is relative gain should be close to 1 and not negative, not less than 0. And so analyzing uh, what we want to pair um, input 1 with, if we look down this column, um, what we're going to see is that uh, we have 1.5 minus 0.41 and minus 0.08. 1.5 is reasonably close to one and it is also not negative. So we're going to decide to pair output one with input one. And that kind of eliminates uh, input one as a potential. Now, if we wanna say, okay, with input two, which output do I wanna pair output two with or input two with, and we've already used input, I'm sorry, output one. So now we have to decide between 0.97 and minus 0 0.95. Again, following the rule that it's not negative, we can kind of eliminate uh, output three from pairing with input two. So we're going to pair output two with input two. And then finally, um, we're gonna make note here uh, that we're only left with uh, pairing output three with input three. And so getting this far at the end of the day is the purpose of our relative gain arrays. Um, and you can begin to apply this process with larger systems such as a four by four or five by five uh, relative gain array, or I'm sorry, a transfer function matrix. Let S equal zero, determine what the steady state gain is for all your uh, parameters and you will be able to perform the same logic and process in order to determine how you want to pair your inputs and outputs. That's gonna wrap things up for this video. I hope it helps. Let me know if you have any questions and thank you for watching.